Well, I'm against it. It can't be done. They've tried it three, four times. It can't be done. And what do we gain by merger? 26,000 broadcasters, radio announcers. That doesn't work. After actors have access to say. That's a good question. That's leadership, or lack of, that it's not enforced. It should have been enforced. In the eight years I've been on the board, the national board, and always I've been a national board member, it's not been enforced. They don't work to do it. I think it's weak. I don't think it's leadership. When you want to go out and make friends with all the other branches, that's great. We're all friends. But you're not going to bring everybody together. People come here, they have an investment. There are two ways you can make it in this business. You can go to New York, study theater. Hopefully, you get a play. You don't make it in the theater, you come to California. If you want to live in uh, uh, you know, Portland and, and, and do theater, you should. And I, and I support that. But I don't think you should have the same voice that I do living in L.A. or in, in New York and trying to make a living. To be qualified, you'd have to earn 50,000, 75,000. 90% of the actors don't earn that. But that doesn't make you a better actor because you earn more money. What qualifies you is that card. When I got my card at the Plaza Hotel with nine lines, I said, my God, man, I can do Naked City. I can do the Defenders, and I did. I did do those shows. You get your SAG card, you get a job. If it's one, 10, 20 lines, my God, I'm an actor. I'm an actor. Well, I think that's people that make a lot of money and are probably have a dual uh, course in what they do. They're uh, producers, whether it's Clooney or Hanks or a lot of other people. The board has become very clicky, you know. The same people on the board that say we're this and we're that and we're racist or this, they turn around and they manipulate the rest of the board. On the eight years I've been on there, I have not seen very much done. They tried to merge us and call it Enema, <laughs> or Ama, one of the two. because I'm no better than somebody that makes a million dollars and they're no better than me and I've worked with them. You just gotta play with me. You gotta look at me and you gotta hear me. If you don't hear me, I'll just play it without you. That makes it tough on you and it makes it tough, tough on me. And a good director doesn't let that happen. But qualified doesn't belong in this. You got the card, that qualifies you. By make better contracts, by taking the, the, the contracts we have and possibly tearing them up. You know, three and a half years ago, Nick Counter said to me, Seymour, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you working on? And this is on the negotiation committee. And I just read where three and a half years after an actor's deceased, the residuals go back to the producers. Well, I've been getting residuals for 20 years by then. I said, no, no, that doesn't work. But I knew what they were thinking. They wanted to stop, like, like closing the motion picture home. That's all about money. It's all about putting condos up. Extremely. That contributes to your pension. It contributes to your health benefits, your dental. And if you have little kids, my daughter has three little kids. You know, her husband's an actor. Thank God he qualified for SAG. When those two twins were born at St. John's, it was $175,000. Well, I don't trust him anyway. You know, it's taken him two, over two months to give me uh, two residuals for a movie I did up in Canada, which if we hadn't gotten Global Rule 1, which was a great thing, where our contract goes with us, you have to pay us residuals. Uh, if we hadn't gotten that, I wouldn't be getting these residuals. But I see them, they were sent by NBC on June 2nd, and I just got the residuals the other day. It was June, July, August, we're almost into September. That's over, it's almost three months.
Well, I think uh, we have a problem with uh, some of the people in very high salaries in, on staff that, in my opinion, I don't think they do that much. And uh, I think it's more necessary to have more people working on residuals than it is to have a, a liaisons for the press and liaisons, you know, for these other things and at the picnic, uh, you know, or the 4th of July or the Memorial Day picnic. That's nice and we should have that. But I think it's more important that you get those residuals out. I've been trying to get for actors that we did Beer League in New York over two years ago. They showed it on television. They finally got the $75,000. And I saw Allison today and I said, when are you sending out the check? She said, I, I think, I hope that I'm trying to get it out within the next couple of weeks. But actors call me from New York, Seymour, what's going on? What can I do? I'm a board member. I can just go up and, and you talk to these people and then they don't do anything about it. Because if you work for the Screen Actors Guild on the staff, you work 20 years, you retire, you get a pension. That's quite a plus. Then you can take another job and work for another pension. You don't understand where I came from. I came from the streets of Detroit and New York. I worked as a waiter in New York at Jack Dempsey's while I was studying acting. I worked at the Stork Club while I was studying acting. Sherman Billingsley fired me because he thought I was Jewish. He put a gun in my face. I worked to become who I was. And, and some people luck into it. And we got, if you're that pretty and that handsome, good luck to you. But the hard work pays off better. Well, who's there to be afraid of? If it's not football or baseball where somebody's going to punch you. I can promise you that I will fight for each individual actor as I think and I hope that it would be done for me. And it's not being done.